Well, this morning, it's, um, as you can see, in our ever-ongoing series of old and seasoned gentlemen, we have another very experienced one over here, um, Patrice. So, yeah, speaking of age and experience and wisdom, success, what is it? And can it come to you too early? Yeah, it can, definitely. Um, well, I'm 24, and um, I'm a musician, singer, songwriter. Um, yeah, and I'm a little bit successful in, in like Europe. I do, um, I did a lot of touring, a lot of, um, I did, a, up to now I did three albums, um, one mini album. Yeah, that's about it. I, I toured with several people. How would you cope, let's say, tomorrow if you're playing at a cafe on your own? Would you be able to do that? Definitely. I mean, that's how I started out. When I opened up for people, you know, it was just me and the guitar. It was quite a rough experience because uh, um, like, before, uh, playing before Lauren, it was like in big arenas. You know, that's when she was on her peak and, um, you know, just a guitar. <laughs> on this big stage and a lot of people. It was quite quite an experience. I was so nervous the first time I played um, before um, Lauren Hill that um, my, my foot was shaking, but I mean, about this much. And I had to basically somehow, you know, <laughs> adjust it to the, to the stool I was on so that it wouldn't shake so much. I was quite nervous. Yeah, because, you, you know, you have to remember, it, it, her whole band was watching me as well. They were like on the sides, you know, Ron Marley, the Marlies, and you know, it was a little bit intimidating. The first group I opened up for, I mean, that's how I got started opening up for people, was um, the Black Eyed Peas, who now blew up big time before they weren't that known. And that's also interesting. If you if you basically you work with people and you play small small clubs, and then all of a sudden they blow up, and you, you really feel happy for them. So, probably before we, you know, pester you with more of that biography stuff, why don't you just play a song and let the music do the talking, and then we go to what you came here in the first place? Okay, yeah, I'm better at that. I'm better at playing songs. I just had some ideas, and I just wanted to realize them, and it, there wasn't really, it was nothing other than the feeling or the wanting to basically do something creative and express myself. Um, I never really, there was no real reason other than that, you know? Um, when did you come up with the language you'd write in? Your first songs, were they in, in what language were they? They were in English since um, English, I mean, all the music I listened to, all the music I liked was English, was in English and um, so I, it didn't come to my mind to write in German, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, the other day I, I was, um, I, I worked together with this guy from England. His name is Cameron McVeigh. He's the guy who wrote um, Seven Seconds. Um, and I learned something from him because it, he would just go into a newspaper, for example, look up a, a sentence and use that and then I don't know, you know, somebody would say something across the road and he would just pick that up and add this to, to the thing from the newspaper and, and basically use a stream of consciousness and associations and stuff like that. Because if you check out Seven Seconds, for example, it doesn't make any sense. The song is just words, you know. <laughs> That's another way. Um, basically, to... I think a good songwriter is, is basically a sensitive person who um, instinctively knows what it takes to um, what it takes, and um, who possesses the skill to express it, and has the style to make it sound cool. Uh, yeah. But style—that's probably like ideas. Is this something you can train on, or is oh. it given to you? Style is is. <clears throat> I don't know, style is basically, the, my style I came up with 
because um, in a way that I, I would look at what other people did and, and try to do it differently, for example. But I think that everybody naturally possesses his own style. You know, you just have to basically, um, you know, learn about yourself more sometimes in order to find your style. Because I think everybody is different, you know. And um, the, the mistake a lot of people make is that they are too inspired by other musicians. Yeah. Um, Where does deliverance fall into this? Because when you have someone like, let's say, an easy example, Frank Sinatra, um, it's probably not necessarily his voice, but knowing exactly when to pause, where to put the cadences and all that kind of stuff. And even when you, you know, redo old versions of songs you already recorded and change these things around, is that an extension of the style? Yeah, it's part of the style, but it's, it's you know, all those things basically go together. Um, I think those pauses and, and, and melody lines is really up to your feeling, like what you feel like doing. It's like you cannot really learn it. You, you, just, you just feel that there needs to be a pause right there, and that's when you will, will leave the pause. And um, really and truly, you just have to try and be sensitive, because I think good songs, they write themselves. You just follow the idea and, and let it talk to you. So, um, under which circumstances do they write themselves? Um, well, any circumstance. If you, if you basically are, are just silent, you know, and, and just try and, try and really uh, go into yourself and, and, and um, just receive, you know? Of Look course. Oh, yeah, looking at ideals um, of how an artist works, when we sat yesterday on the rocks in Camps Bay, in a kitschy artist notion way, that would have been the situation to write a song, looking at the 360 okay. degrees of cinemascope, clouds and light and whatever. Well, there's different scenarios. I mean, this is one way, but I'm not the type, for example, that sits down in in a room with incense and, and starts meditating, necessarily. <laughs> It's one way, yes, but um, you also can write great songs when you when you're in um, difficult situations or when you when you're like in a room where there's just gray walls, like in a prison. <laughs> I mean, I haven't been in prison, but you know, lot, m the greatest music was created by sufferers. You know, greatest music is sufferer music. I think you should put yourself in uncomfortable situations because. It's, that's when your your brain really starts working, and 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 you f you have to come up with something. You you really under pressure, and and um, I think one of the main factors that kill artists is um, comfort. You know that's why a lot of artists that that start out being uh, as as great people, after they've had a certain degree of success, start getting worse and worse. Um, and as I said. Sometimes you have to make yourself suffer. Like, for example, you, you let the person you love quit you or something. So that, um, and you have to remember, it's, it's basically for a greater good. Because um, a, a timeless song lives forever and you basically keep your legend alive like that. Sometimes that's okay if you suffer a little bit. So let's write a song. So where do we start then? Okay, does anybody have an idea or like, or which formula do you want to start with? Do you want to come up with the words first or the the melody or the words? Okay, do you have any idea of like anything that you would come up with any sentence or? Hundred rent, the local currency. Hundred rent. Okay, okay. All right. This is going to be my special workout then, huh? Yeah, I mean, you, you got a lot of things, but you don't have a mic stand. Someone get a mic stand, please. Okay. But nobody has no um, melody idea. I'll just play some chords and you tell me, tell me which chords you like, okay? I mean, I I'm going to play some of my standards first. I would, right now, 
what I would feel like doing in this moment is I would put the chorus twice at first. Um, I would start with the chorus, <laughs> the more chorus, and then um, I would come in the verse, the short one, about um, maybe eight bars, and then I would go back to the chorus, which is very simple and straight up. It's basically what people would expect, but sometimes you can even give people what they expect because there's nothing wrong in that. <laughs> you feel like doing it. Sometimes it's not so great because um, you have to keep the tension in a song. In order to keep it exciting, sometimes you need to put some surprises in there and give people something they don't expect. You know, which is another factor, tension. You know, and building, building the tune. But this is about what I would come up with right now. In a lot of the songs you say a lot of pretty nice and pretty personal things. Um, <laughs> sometimes in front of a lot, a lot of people and things in a way a lot of us would probably not have the heart to say them just in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Is this, once you cr and cross that barrier, it's a lot easier or how do you cope with I that, you know, putting these intimate things out there? I think that's what it's really about and I also think that um, music really lacks this. I think People don't really show themselves when they're on stage or when they, when they do music. You know, the other day I, I had a real, a great experience. I went to an Ozla Rocker um, concert and she was really just like showing herself. And y y when you went away after the concert, it was like you really got something. It's not just entertainment or it's not just, you, you haven't just been dancing and having fun. No, you, you really took something with you, you know, it really enriched me, basically. And, um, well, I don't know, I don't have a problem with saying those things, you know, because for me it's just, um, um, it's basically some sort of poetry, primitive one maybe, I don't know. It's, it's, um, I don't know, it's what, it's, it's just the way, I, it's the way I feel. So, let's say you're in a personal situation yourself and your girlfriend would go like, um, no Patrice, don't give me that. You've sung that about 200 times. Come up with something new. <laughs> well, um, when, I'm, when, when I'm in a situation like that, usually I wouldn't, I, I think it's, for me it's a lot easier to express certain things in my songs than in, in, uh, in real life. Yeah. It's because of that virtual scenario. Don't know. It's just like that. <laughs> I don't. I um. I don't have a problem with um expressing myself in a song, but sometimes it's hard to express yourself when you're in front of a person. You know. Um, and if we come back to our hundred rand story, I mean, we had one line there, probably a second one. What would it take it to get it to a three-minute song? The 100 rent, rent thing. Um, it needs a little bit more work. Do it we, does. Yes, true. Will we look for will we look for rhyme words now, or how do we go from here? I mean, right now what I did it was a lot of freestyling. You know, some some stuff wasn't so great, but uh, you know, sometimes you need to do a little bit more thinking when it comes to the lyrics. I mean, melodies are quite I find quite easy to find it's just the lyrics sometimes in order to really say something you need to think about it um, I would basically as I said I would um, put the chorus first then come up with the verse maybe eight bars verse then um, come back with the chorus um, then do do some like instrument, um, like an instrumental part in which I, there wouldn't be no singing, and then come back with the verse, add some elements to it, uh, vary it a little bit, like don't follow the same uh, melody line like in the first verse, but vary it a little bit, and um, come back with the chorus, after that maybe do like a bridge, and then come so back. We're talking arrangement here, but yeah. you said you would need to think a little more about the words. Yeah. I mean, there's 
one or two helpers in this room. So um, should we give the words a bit more of a thinking then? Okay, no problem. How would you go about it? Would you still strum the guitar and think about the words while at it? Or do you sit down under a tree with a little notepad? It depends. It depends. I mean, um, I think I would do a little bit of thinking without strumming the guitar. And um, in a situation like this where I better come up with something, I usually come up with something. <laughs> it's just that you have to um, overcome your laziness almost. Okay, let's do it. So we were like saying a um, hundred... A hundred rand. A uh, hundred rand. Oh, no, I started out saying they want to buy my, uh, buy my, let's put it, uh, they want to buy myself for a hundred rand, oh. rand. Um, I can't even see past this microphone stand. But who would be in a position to have to be in the danger of selling a soul for a hundred rand? That's about ten euros. I mean, that yes. must be a person who's not exactly in your position. Yeah, but... There's, I mean, I think everybody that has to work for a living and, and has to basically survive. So we have a person that's working for a living. That's a good start as a setting. And for I, I think most people are, you know, we have to work in order to survive. And a lot of times we, we have to do work that um, are not very fulfilling, but we have to do them in order to make some money. And some people really, I mean, a hundred rand is just an exaggeration, but just to, to, to show people for how cheap we basically sell, have to sell our souls sometimes. So, to look at it that way, a hundred, they want to buy my soul. And, um, then, um, Pressure. And then not, not a soul around in this no man's land. What about that? Is that okay? Yeah. okay? Do you decide beforehand whether you end up in an uplifting or in a rather depressing note? Not really. I mean, we'll see. Um, in this no man's land, nobody to give me a hand. What about that? I don't know. What did we say? Because the one man band, I know, I know. <laughs> but I thought, I, I mean, it's. <sighs> I mean, it fits this situation, but whether it fits the, the song is, is, is the question. Yeah. Yeah, we could we could change the rhyme. Yeah. Are you in some stage afraid of words which might sound too cliche? Of course, yes. As in which ones? What are the ones you're trying to avoid? Right now? Right now and in general. It's not about cliché, it's just about, um, like, because first, yeah, I mean, every song has a kind of a concept. Like right now, when I started writing this, I didn't really know about the concept, but now I think the concept would be, um, yeah, that what we have to do basically to survive and, and how we have sometimes have to compromise our ideals and principles if you understand what I mean. But what do you know about compromising? I mean, you... Um, Compromise, trust me, I know about that. <laughs> you know, as, as you work with, um, with other people, you always have to compromise, you know? Uh, let's say, especially when you, when you work with people that have different interests, like sometimes when you work um, with record labels, you have to compromise because you have some weird and our people walking into the studio being like trying to tell you how to do things you know 
and um, you have to listen to them, which is already a compromise, or you have to basically give them the feeling that you're listening. You're listening, or you, that you basically are respecting their view and stuff like that. So, or, or let's say, let's say sometimes you play gigs. You know, you 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 had a, a whole different. People told you one thing, and then you show up at the gig, and it's a whole different scenario. And um, you're basically just <coughs> playing f because the people came to see you. But that's also a compromise, like you know. Yeah, I think everybody knows about that. In the beginning, you you sang um, wanna sell my gonna sell my soul for a hundred rand. So um, I don't know. It's maybe a possible option to come back when you when you do the chorus in the end. So it could maybe be kind of like a happy end, or maybe some some turn around turn around point where it's about, you said now it's like you want to buy my soul and something mm. like buy and sell. Because in the in the very beginning when you sang the, sang it the first time, it was like sell. Okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. So what do we got there now? Yeah, the paper is quite small, but <laughs> um, I would say they want to um, uh, want to sell myself for a hundred rand. Not a soul around in this nomad's land. Today is the day. I won't pretend. Not again. You know. There's this mountain to climb. Heavy load on my back. I put my shoulder to the wheel. I feel uh, I put my, must put myself back on track. Uh, the town, the town in the valley, held held to my left, and then this is my this is my homecoming. There ain't no turning back. And then chorus again. Oops, here it is. Oh no. Uh, and then they wanna buy my soul for a hundred rand. Not a soul around in this no man's land. Today is the day. I won't pretend. No, 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 not again. As far as I remember. You know. <laughs> Okay.